Sucker beads. Hey everyone, it's Fox from ModelMakingGuru.com here and welcome to part 8 of our build of Bandai's 160 scale perfect grade Zaku 2 char as Nable's custom mobile suit. I never quite know how to say as Nable. Is it as Nable? As Nable? As Nable? Char. It's Char's Zaku. But we're going to be painting it as a grunt suit, not as Char's. Don't worry, you've not missed anything. I'm just filming this at the end to say hello. Um, this is what we're going to get to by the end of this episode. Um, it's just doing it this way because this is going to be mostly built, well it's going to be all building with a little tiny bit of painting on the head. So if you're just interested in the painting and the weathering, skip this episode because this is just putting stuff together. I wanted to get the frame done because then we can crack on with the painting and weathering. So when we start this video I will have built a leg and that's it and I'll go through the arms and everything else. But we're going to start off with the head. So let me go and get everything ready even though I did it about a week ago you know what I'll just just wipe right okie dokie so before we get going on the arms and legs because I'm still waiting for the paint on some of the little parts to dry um, I'm gonna start on the head now I'm gonna try and film doing the head however it's gonna involve a lot of really close-up fiddly wiring bits so I suspect it's not gonna come out so if you don't see me doing the head my apologies I probably have to get so close to it with my face and my space helmet of seeing that I won't be able to film it. However, what I can show you uh, is doing the clear parts, not this bit, this is the schnoz, doing the clear parts. The head comes with two clear parts. You have the, I suppose you could call it a visor or the windscreen that goes on the front, through which you see the mono eye. And you also have the mono eye itself. Now, the kit comes with a sticker that you can put inside. Um, to make it look like a mono eye. However, it also comes with an LED unit and the wiring and bits to make it so you can have the mono eye light up. So I'm gonna go that route. I've never done wiring before. I've never done lighting in a kit and I don't want to do lighting, but I'll give this one a go. So here we have the mono eye. Instead of sticking the sticker on, which would then defeat the point of having a mono eye, because it wouldn't light up, I'm going to actually paint it. And we're going to use some uh, crystal red AMIG 093. Now this stuff is quite thick and it's a bit like jelly. So what I'm going to do is take my crystal red and I'm going to put a little bit onto my plastic surface of paint shenanigans. You can see it's quite a thick colour, it's quite gloopy. It's not like the periscope green which is quite thin, it's gloopy. And what I'm also going to do is take some thinners and apply the thinners to the crystal red so I can munge it up and get a thinner paint. Because I don't want to get any brush marks, obviously that will just kind of suck. So let's just munge this up a little bit. We want to try and get something similar to the Crystal Periscope Green. So I think that's going to do just fine. So what we're going to do is simply slap it in. Now I'm not too bothered about the size because there is a black sticker that comes with the kit. I still on camera, that'd be great, wouldn't it? There is a black sticker that comes with the kit that goes around the outside, outside of, I'm talking rubbish, outside of the eye um, to prevent light leak. So I can kind of carelessly slap this paint on because all I'm really interested in is getting as much paint as possible, if I can do it on camera, into the lens so that when the light shines through it, it's gonna be red. Now ideally what will happen is, if I've got this horizontal, I think I've got it horizontal, I've got it horizontal, uh, it should pool a little bit either on the outside or on the inside. I'm not sure which it'll do. So we can really put it in there quite thick. Um, and by pooling, it'll have some darker areas and some lighter areas. So when the light is turned on, hopefully, there'll be some natural variation and it won't just be one solid colour. Now I could have just painted it normally and just, you know done a clear red and brushed it on but I wanted to thin it to get that graded effect that gradation I'll paint the rest of the inside the red as well just for consistency because you never know what you're going to see so there we go that's done so I'm going to leave that to dry for a while once it's fully dried I've done it on the inside so that the outside stays shiny uh, once it's dried 
it'll probably thin out and become a bit more transparent so I might go back in with another couple of coats but that's the mono I'd done and hopefully that should work if it all goes to pot and the lighting doesn't work then I can always just stick the sticker on the front but there's a black sticker that goes around the outside here so that will break it up a little bit so let me put that to one side and we'll do the next thing let me get everything ready back in a moment right now on to the next step which will be familiar to those of you who've built aircraft before uh, and potentially other vehicles we're going to deal with the clear canopy or the windscreen or the face mask or whatever you want to call this currently it looks like clear plastic i'm wearing gloves because i don't want to get fingerprints and schmutz on it and it's been cleaned off and dusted uh, what we're going to do is dip it in a gloss of some sort to make it look more like glass now it's obviously not going to be clean by the end of the project but we want to start with it looking like glass if we can may not work it doesn't always work there are a number of different products you can use um, not all gloss varnishes will work because it needs to be able to self level um, i'm personally using uh, pledge floor care finish two times more shine which you know i use as my gloss coat uh, it's the modern version of clear and future which used to be used a lot uh, and we're going to simply dip it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some of my floor care finish two times more shine two times more shine I have to say that every time it's in my contract i'm going to put a load of it in here now don't worry that i'm using a lot because this will go straight back into the bottle when i've finished do, 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 do. it smells like strawberry daiquiri and this couldn't be easier all we do is we somehow grab our piece now tweezers will do fine but they're not the most grippy of things but they'll do for now so we take our piece and we're going to need the, the gloss to dip it in the piece and some tweezers something to rest it on and a piece of tissue so what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece we're going to dip it slowly into the gloss don't go fast because you don't want to get air bubbles so just dip it slowly in all the way in all the way under keep it there for a second and then very slowly pull it out now again, what you want to avoid is pulling it out so fast that you make air bubbles. Okay, so we can just shake that. Now you can do it again, so I'm going to put it in again just to make sure, make sure I've not missed anything. Thankfully it's a nice and simple piece. It's not all convoluted and things like that. There's no surface detail on it or, you know, frame lines or anything. So I'm going to just dip it in. I know my hand's in the way, my apologies. And then we're going to very slowly pull it out again again it's just to make sure you don't get any bubbles okay so now what we're going to do is just give it a quick shake now what you might find is it might pull towards an edge or the bottom you might have too much on there so what we need to do now is carefully move this out of the way because if I was Tony I would have spilled that by now and we're just gonna very quickly touch it and I can't really do this I've done it in the wrong hand really but we're going to touch a corner to the tissue and why are we doing this because what this is doing there's actually an excess on here but what this would do is wick off any excess I'm trying to do it in such a way that you can see it wick off any excess without actually really touching the bit we've put gloss onto the tissue now thankfully there isn't any excess on here so I might give it one more go. You can do this as often as you want. I'm going to give it one more go just to make sure. This may be a slightly thicker formulation than the old Clear of Future, so it may not run off and drip. Now, like I say, there are a number of different products you can do this with. Some gloss varnishes. Not every gloss varnish will work. Um, and there are some specific products for this kind of thing. But I haven't tried them. But I have done this in the old Future and Clear, so I have high hopes that this should be just as good. So again, we're just going to touch it to the tissue. I can do it on the flat end because you're not going to see the flat edge. And it's just to wick off any excess. Give it a flat bit. There we go. Because you want the gloss medium covering everything, but you don't want it to pull up into a bulbous lump anywhere. So getting rid of the excess is a good idea. So that looks pretty good to me. I can't see it piling up on any edges or corners 
cool. So all we need to do now is place this down carefully. I'm using this Tamiya tape dispenser. I'm going to place it down here so it's not resting on anything. The only bits that are in contact are these two back corners, which you're not going to see anyway. I know it's just on the bottom of the screen. My apologies. Let's see if I can move it. Uh, so you've got down here, you can see it's, it's resting on the back corners and they're the only bits touching the tissue. So if there is any excess, it will run down to those corners and hopefully wick into the tissue. And then all you need to do is cover it. You don't need to make it, you want to have a bit of space for air to get in um, so that it can circulate and dry. But this is to keep dust off because this is like, this will attract dust like honey attracts bees. So that now needs to be left for 24 hours. Hopefully, when it's dried, I mean you can you can work with it quicker. You know, it will be dry by within a couple of hours. But I'm going to leave it 24 hours at least before you do anything with it, just to be safe. So I'm going to leave that for 24 hours, and hopefully, when we come back, it will have more glassy look rather than just clear plastic. You'll often find if you've got very fine scratches or marring in the plastic, it can actually hide those only to a certain degree, but it can hide them quite well. And if you've had to sand a clear piece a little bit it might try and hide that. There is actually a nub on that clear piece that I couldn't sand out because it's right above the, you'll see it when I get it out, it's right, there's the, the bottom of the plastic piece, it's right here and you can't do anything with that. So I'm stuck with that nub. So let me go and put this um, pledge away uh, and we'll come back to this when it's had 24 hours to dry. I'm gonna stay away from this desk now because I can't get dust on it. So my glove just made a farty noise. I won't do it again now. Well, I hope you heard it, it was quite funny. Um, so yes, let's go and leave this to dry. Back in a moment. Okay, right, let's see how these puppies came out. It's been about 24 hours. And as you can see, the red part for the mono eye has come out really quite nicely, actually. Look at that. Now, it doesn't look like much now, and it will get a gloss coat over it. There's no gloss coat over this yet. Uh, but I did put my camera and my phone torch behind it. So it's a small LED, which is exactly what you get in the kit. And it did come out looking rather funky. So yeah, not quite pleased with that. Again, that'll get a gloss coat and there is a black stick to go around this edge here to light block. Now let's see what this comes out like. You never know with these things. Let's take this off and have a look. Get this out of the way. I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to get schmutz all over it. Okay, so let me just adjust. Do we need the white balance? No, it's fine. So here we have, I'll just focus on it a bit so you can see better. Yeah, there goes the light. You can see now, hopefully, with this dipping of the pledge, if you, the pledge, oh, you know, I can never remember what it's called. Let me get it out. Every time I have to do this, I have to get this out to remind myself. Pledge floor care finish two times more shine. I have to do that every time. But you can see now, it looks much more like glass. It looks disturbingly clean, which won't last for long. That won't last for long. But I'm quite pleased with that. It's come out really nicely. I can't see any bulges or lumps or anything anywhere that I need to worry about. Again, you have got, like I said before, you have got a little nub there. I can't, I can't do anything with that. I could have sanded this back, but there's no guarantee I would have got rid of all the sanding marks. So I'd rather just have a little tiny nub that you might not see or that I can cover up with weathering. So cool, that's done. And the headlight or the uh, mono eye. So I'll go and get all these put away. Uh, when we come back, we will do probably a time lapse, but we're going to do a arm and a leg build because uh, I'm going to show you the arm and the leg that I've already built because I built one each to test it first um, it's actually hmm, I'll tell you when we come back with the arm and the leg back in a moment <coughs> right so let's crack on with the leg we have here all the parts for our leg uh, including goddamn Saku beads <coughs> thankfully these aren't as fiddly to put on and there's not as many of them I have gone ahead and removed paint from all the relevant uh, bits where things need to connect. Like these, like you see here, I've taken the paint off this bit. Uh, I've gone through all the pieces and done that because, and I know which bits to do. What's that? I don't know what that is. Um, because I've already built one. Here's one leg. Yes, it's awesome, isn't it? Um, it is very, very creaky kind of makes me nervous when I move it. Oh. I don't think we'll be posing this, it'll be basically posed and left. But you can see here, this is the uh, entire inner leg frame. Uh, we have the 
yeah this bit pops out all the time it's not supposed to be in there yet i'm just keeping it in here for safekeeping for the time being until i put the armor it's not going to stay in never mind um so yes you can see it's all gone together uh we have the um parts that i've painted uh with a kind of anodized red effect we have the chrome mechy plated parts here on the little pistons which look fantastic the way they close up like that it is very very stiff and you can't tell you how stiff these joints are and partly that's because i've painted it now ha huh, bit of a bit of a thing with this one is everything's gone painted been painted all assembled went really well and then we have here this is where we've got some surfaces above these sort of round areas like this bit here as you move it down it's taken the paint off that joint there and it's because the tolerances in tolerance tolerances in this kit are ridiculous they are so perfectly engineered that even just the smallest amount of paint or primer or anything is just gumming up that joint so what i've done on the other leg which we're about to build i have gone ahead if i can find the right part i've gone ahead and i have taken all the paint out of this part here scraped it off with the scalpel blade sanded it just a little bit um, i'm hoping that will be enough because it's this bit here which is that bit there and it's dragging all the paint off and this bit here is similar it's the top of this bit is cutting the paint off up to there so i've taken all the paint off here so hopefully that will fix it it might not though because the tolerances are such that it might still make no difference because there would be enough paint on this part on the other leg that it'll still scrape it off it's not the end of the world um because the reason i did it on this one and not on because i didn't think about that on this i didn't think it would be a problem it's only when i built this thing and there's no way i'm going to take this apart now i built it because trust me yeah so what we'll either end up with is this leg with these and this leg with no paint removed or this will do exactly the same and we'll get that paint removed but i'm not too fussed i'm not panicking because this is very easily fixed when we finished everything else and we've got all the you know the frame and stuff on the armor and stuff on we can then go ahead and we can just simply dry brush over this with some steel it won't look exactly the same but it will hide it enough that once the weathering goes on everything else it'll be fine because my idea is once it's done i'm going to put it in a nice pose and then leave it i'm not going to be bending the leg every five minutes and then obviously if i do sell this it'll be sold and suggested to the buyer that they pose it once and leave it they may get some paint loss if they do that so i wanted to show you that because we're going to try see what comes out now i've sanded those off so if this does work it's only a very little bit of light sanding and taken off hopefully i've taken off the primer and the paint here and that's enough of a gap at this end to avoid that so we'll see basically if not like i say we can just dry brush it so what i'm going to do let me put this to one side we will crack on with this building i'm going to time lapse this and when i do the arm i'm going to time lapse that i haven't built an arm yet because i'm still waiting on the red parts you can see here these are the pistons for the arms and they're just silver so you know what i did was they were primed with the uh black primer they were then uh, painted over with silver just straight from the airbrush uh silver which is amig 195 uh, that's been left to dry for 24 hours and then what i did was i took some crystal red amig 093 our old friend from the mono eye and i put in a few draw well, i don't know about seven or eight drops of it into a pot of thinner mig thinner amig 2000 to a really thin consistency because this stuff is really thick and it's actually quite hard to airbrush it without thinning it anyway because it'll just gunk up if you put thinner in your airbrush cup and then put this in this just goes right down to the bottom and gunks your airbrush up so you have to really work with this thinned if you're airbrushing it so it's more like a wash and then i just built the color up in little layers very carefully layer air layer air layer air to the point where it had this kind of it's not quite a candy look uh adam from enigma model making described it as an anodized aluminium look i think uh, adam if that was right uh, and then there's a layer of gloss varnish over the top that's how we did these bits uh, those are the only bits i'm going to do that effect on i may on some little bits on the inner frame because we'll get to inner frame detail painting when we built the frame i may do a similar thing where i'll paint something silver by brush and then paint something over it with a clear color by brush just because they're going to be small areas not to masking them off because it's not going to be worth it so so that's those so they're drying for the arms I haven't built an arm yet 
So let's go ahead and get this built. I will go time lapse because we're going to try and do this and the arm in this video. And trust me, it's not a hard build, but you have to pay attention. There's a lot of really pushing parts together to get them to fit because they're so tight, which is why I pre-scraped all the pegs and things that I'm going to use. Um, so it can take quite a while and quite a bit of swearing and cussing and pushing and shoving. So I don't want to build a leg in the entire episode and that's it. So let me shut up. We'll start the time-lapse build. When we come back, uh, we will start the arm back in a moment. Right, that is all done. Oh, what a absolute faff. It's not easy. Got to tell you, these are so tight fitting, this is not an easy build. It's not complicated in the number of parts, but... So, you may have seen that, but I don't know if it came out, but I was, I was struggling a bit. I got the piston, this part here, with the pistons upside down. It didn't help, so I had to take it all apart again. Getting these side pieces to end caps to fit was an absolute nightmare. They've got little tabs that you have to get in just the right place, but it's such a tight fit. It's not quite right. You can't turn them. So that was messing about. <sighs> but we got it done in the end. Um, you can see here, I've scraped a few bits of paint off here and there, trying to get it all to go together. That's fine. We can dry brush over. It's not a problem at all. Uh, we're still getting scrapey scrapey here, even though I did uh, sand and sand it down and take it off it feels a bit looser than the other leg it's not quite as tight so obviously did a bit better job of preparing the parts where the poly caps go in this leg is a little bit stiffer the more I move it the more it's loosening up but you don't want to move it all the time you'll kill everything so we have got some paint scraper here this one is kind of lucky that it's reasonably uniform so you could just you know get matte varnish over that and leave it that color and no one ever know I could if I could I could sand it and it would look kind of gray so we'll we'll think about these. It's not taking off much more. I did on the other leg. I kept working it to take the paint off, so it was an even wear. But on here, it's not so bad. Up here, it's down here. It's doing it. So yeah, it may just need some remedial work once it's all finished, just to brush that back in and weather it back. So it it, it just kind of blends. So we'll figure it out. We can make we can make weathering out of that. So yep, all done both legs done it's 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 not an unenjoyable build i can imagine if this wasn't painted it'd be an enjoyable build and it's not super complicated it's not like you know your your latest sort of you know perfect grade unicorns or your double o risers it's not like that kind of level of complicated or the gpo one it's it's fairly simple it's more like a master grade it's just bigger but because we've painted it it makes it more challenging to get stuff to fit even when you sand and scrape paint off joints still a bit of a faff so anyway that's both legs done now we have to go and do the arms so let me um let me go and get all the parts ready for that i still need to paint those silver bits red and then i can assemble an arm as a test and then film it for you so from your point of view i will be back in a moment with a built arm and a pile of pieces back in a moment 
Okay, and we have an arm and a pile of pieces, as promised. So I built the first arm uh, as a trial run through. Really quite a lot easier than doing the leg, gotta tell you. Uh, it's also a lot smoother. There's a lot less stiffy joints. Uh, got lots of nice pistons. You've got some here. You've got one here, which is a bit, a bit stiff, a bit creaky cracky, but it's all right. Uh, they tend to come out very easily until you build the whole thing and screw this in and then it seems to be fine. Uh, we have a little thing here, which does the sticky out bit. I'm assuming that's for the armor. Now these are poly caps. Um, and obviously we're going to have to be super careful with these poly caps because these are exposed and a lot of things will just dissolve these. So what we'll probably do is when everything's done we'll give this a dry brush of steel and that'll just make it look like the rest. So we're going to be careful with those. Got the piston here for the hand. Well, I'm not quite sure, it's quite stiff, but you get a bit of piston moving there, not much, a tiny little bit. And of course we have the hand with its poseable fingerings. Do like that. Now until you put this top cover on, this is why I've had to put the top cover on here, uh, these things just fall out, which is a nightmare. And I also didn't mark them as to which they were, so I had to spend a couple of minutes figuring out which finger's which, so I kind of hope I've got them in the right order. It kind of looks like my hand a little bit, not much. Uh, we are getting some paint coming off the ball joints, but that's not a problem at all because you can't really see from the top. Underneath there's just a few little chips, uh, and all I need to do when I've done everything else is just dry brush some chrome, uh, some um, steel over there, and that will hide it nicely. Because I said once I built this, I don't really intend playing with it. It's going to be posed and left. But you've got some nice movement. I've not put the hand on fully. It's quite a stiff joint, so I might have to stand that a little bit more. I might leave it. Uh, I've not put it on fully because I need to be able to take it apart potentially. Uh, so yeah, the arm is done. It's time to crack on with the next arm. So I will put this to one side. You can see the paint's coming off there on the ball joint. But again, it's not major. A bit of dry brushing will bring that back and it'll be a really thin coat of paint. So hopefully it won't chip off. Like I said, once it's posed, it's posed. So let's crack on with the next one. I will activate the uh, fast forwardy button. And we'll do... I'm just playing with this now, aren't I? We'll do another arm. So... Rock on, dudes. Yeah, just I'll just put that away now. Press the button. Okay, we now have two arms. Yes, look at that. I do like these arms. They're so much looser than the legs. Anyway, what's next? Well, because of camera limitations, I've gone ahead and I've made tut waist and tut head. Now I've not put batteries in the head yet because I haven't got any. I need to order some. I thought I had some and I hadn't. Uh, so the head is assembled and all the wiring's done. So I've, this is the battery cover under here. So you can just take it off and put the batteries in. As far as I know, I've got the wiring right. The weird thing is, you're supposed to put the wires in, but you're not supposed to strip the plastic off. So I'm hoping what happens is that the screw, when it goes in, shreds the plastic covering and makes a contact with the wire. Little power switch on the front here, which uh, is quite nifty when you see the mechanism. So the head is done. All that remains now, what I'm gonna do uh, is put this together and then we'll finish this episode because we've gone on for quite a while. Uh, and I want to get into the next episode of maybe uh, starting to weather this a little bit and do detail painting. So, let's get this thing assembled, shall we? So, first of all, we have the waist. Get these out of the way. We have the waist of waists. That's the front. Looks like some kind of massive carburetor on the front here. It's kind of cool. It's like something like a muscle car. So, get these legs on. Get your legs on. And hopefully this is on camera. I'm not going to push them in all the way because I don't want them to be permanently irretrievably fixed in place because that will kind of suck. So I'm just going to go on loosely or fully in that case. So if you have the legs, I'm going to run out of space here. I know I am, but never mind. Uh, let's see if we can get it to, it's actually standing on its 
thrusters, so not brilliant. A bit tricky to pose. So it's not got the feet on the bot the bottom of the feet on yet, so yeah, it's not gonna be brilliant. Let's make sure these are in half decent, shall we? I suppose probably a good idea. Pushing, pushing. This will just be loosely fit together so I can see what this thing looks like. Zip. We will apply the arms to the torso. Uh, which should go in there. I've scraped all the paint off the attachment pegs. Because they're just going to be such a tight fit if I don't. They're a tight fit as they are. So, yeah. If I hadn't scraped the paint off, I'd never get them off again. Okay. Let's just make sure this is on. Apologies, I'm a bit overexposed, I've just noticed. Yes, once these things are on, they're never going to come off again, so... I'm just going to fit it together loosely. Loosely, loosely. Get, let's move this out of the way. Get the torso on the waist. I'm not quite sure where I can push down on this. Without popping the leg off like that, never mind. And that leg as well, yes, goodbye. Sigh. Let's get the legs back on. Uh, it's not easy being green. Get the leg on there. Yeah. Surprisingly, there are no screws in the waist section here. It's a bit creaky and not sticky together until you put the last top piece on. You think that's never going to stay together. And then it does. Okay, this is going to fall apart at a moment's notice, but never mind. I'm not intending to stand it up particularly. And then last of all, pop the head on, which is just a friction fit. There's no little snappiness goes on there. It just sits in place. These kind of hold it in, these things. I don't know if they're meant to. And there we, oh, hello. Hang on. And there we have our Zaku in a frame. That's his richtig. A few bits of armor on there, but you kind of have to put those in. Um, but this is the Zaku in a frame. Now done. It's kind of big, I can't get it all in shot. So, looks kind of awesome. I know this is supposed to go around the front, but shh. Looking kind of awesome. It's bigger than I thought as well. And it's quite heavy, it's quite hefty. So that's the inner frame done initially. The build is done, that's out of the way. We've still got to do the tubes around the um, neck and stuff, we've got to do all the armor. So what we need to do now is, and I'm not really sticking to a particular order because I'll probably change my mind as I go along. We need to get this uh, detail painted and weathered. Then on the exterior armor will be the next step after that. There are some seam lines to fill in. We have seam lines on the shoulder armor on this side uh, that we need to fill and paint. And there will be seam lines on the front of the legs. Now I've been debating whether to fill these or not because I'm gonna have to put them on and then fill the seam and then repaint, touch up the paint because I've already painted them. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that or just leave the seam line. I don't know yet because once they're on there, they're glued on, it's on, they're on. And I've got to mess about trying to repaint them without getting stuff all over the inner frame. So I'm not sure yet. I might leave a little seam line on the front, but I don't know. But there is some touch-up paint work to do on the armor because once I started looking at the armor in in situ, um, it kind of all had different tones and shades. So I need to do some more work on the armor, little light patches, dark patches, and just even out the color because some of them don't quite match. But that, I think, is going to do us for this episode. See if I can do this without popping the legs off. <sighs> Let's get him sat down. There you go. Do -do -do. Thing is, I'm never good at posing these things when I've just made one because I'm, I've not got familiar with the joints and what I can push and what I can't. So it takes a little while before I become familiar enough to just go ahead and, there you go, that'll do. Go ahead and pose it. So that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, so come back and we'll start on the detailing and weathering for the inner frame. Thank you so much for watching as always. Um, absolutely very grateful for you for watching. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this episode. Not really much to teach you here apart from you know, watching me put it together, so only a short episode. Um, as always, uh, do let me know what you think in the comments below, uh, or if you want to go to my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash modelmakingguru, or I'm on Twitter, at modelmakingguru. Um, also, don't forget to go along to the Ammo website. The URL is here. Pick up some of the awesome products uh, that are very kindly, they've provided for me to do this build. Uh, that's why we're doing an Ammo by MIG build. 
so do go along I'm having really good fun using them uh, I'm really enjoying the, the weathering with the enamels and everything else got to be a bit cautious on this kit because it's enamels and Bandai plastic isn't baked I found out recently by the way in a handy bit of info the reason Bandai's plastic is so sort of susceptible to breakage with things like enamel thinners and oil thinners um, it's not baked and that's why you sometimes also get the swirly patterns in metallic parts it's not baked so and now you know that's why it's susceptible so that's going to do it again thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves uh, go make something cool uh merry christmas and a happy new year it's actually past christmas now but it's not quite new year yet so here's looking forward to a slightly better 2017 2016 for some things has been a bit of a rubbish year so here's looking forward to a better 2017 uh, and i will see you in the new year with the next step so until next time thank you again adios amoebas <laughs>